Greetings to our viewers, Jesuits, Jesuit friends and families, benefactors, and all our well-wishers. I am Ria Mary Matthew, and I'm delighted to lead you through this prayer service. The Digital Jesuits, in collaboration with XIM University and JCSA, are happy to present Manresa experience through the eyes of a pilgrim, a time to reflect on the life of St. Ignatius, particularly in those pivotal times at Manresa. We request you to share your experience of St. Ignatius on different social media handles using the hashtag Ignatius500. We now have the President of the South Asian Conference, Father Jerome Stanislas D'Souza, to introduce this prayer service to all of us. At the outset, to all of you, the friends of the Society of Jesus across the globe, and especially my dear brothers and sisters, from the Conference of South Asia, I extend my warm greetings of the Ignatian year. Dear friends, we have gathered here online to recall, to reflect on, and to integrate the conversion experience of St. Ignatius in Manresa in and through a prayer service. Father Ignatius had a transformational experience in Mandreza. It rooted and founded him in the love of Christ and inspired him to reach out to others in love and service. In fact, this great desire to love and serve the, the Lord in all things gradually led to the foundation of the Society of Jesus. The Society of Jesus, the Ignatian pathway to God, continues to collaborate with God and the people of goodwill to make this world and our common home a better place to live in. Dear Father Ignatius, we know that you experienced great consolations in the cave of Mandriza. One of them is with God as a community of three persons, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, who always thinks and works for the good of the cosmos and especially the humanity. We, your sons and daughters, ask through your intercession the same grace to experience God as Trinity who labors for the welfare of creation and the humanity. Intercede for us, Father Ignatius, so that we may obtain the same grace and that we may love and care for the creation and especially the less privileged brothers and sisters of ours. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Thank you, Father, for those enriching words. We now have the Regional Assistant of South Asia, Father George Motolil from the Roman Korea, who will be enlightening us with his perspective on the experience of St. Ignatius at Manresa. My dear sisters and brothers, we are in the Ignatian year. As we prepare for the Feast of St. Ignatius with the theme, the Manresa experience from the eyes of the pilgrim, remember the grace we are praying for, to see everything new in Christ. There's an old saying that when you are tired and fed up with life, to refresh yourself, either visit a mental asylum or go for a pilgrimage. We are all tired and exhausted. The COVID pandemic has killed millions. We have lost our own dear ones. Millions of people continue to starve for food, medicine, a bit of oxygen, shelter, a place to be buried, and even just a human touch. Fear grips everyone. The earth is groaning. Yes, it's time we all go on a pilgrimage to heal ourselves. Pope Francis too said, 
this is a time for pilgrimages. The idea of pilgrimage occupied an important place in the life and thought of Ignatius of Loyola. He went on pilgrimages to Jerusalem, Montserrat, Mandriza. In his autobiography and towards the end of his life, Ignatius refers to himself as a pilgrim. Recall the first ever pilgrimage of Inigo. After recovering from his leg injury in 1521, he made a dramatic decision to forego his dreams of knightly bravado. Instead, he decided to dedicate himself to the imitation of saints in following Christ. Inigo left his royal inheritance, laid his sword at the feet of the Black Madonna and set out toward Barcelona. We, his daughters and sons, are called to be pilgrims too. A pilgrim is primarily a traveler, a physical journey and an inner journey. Recall to our minds the thousands of pilgrims who crisscross vast countries across religions, locations and directions. They walk traditionally barefoot, clad in old-fashioned or uniform dress, carrying no money, accepting whatever they receive. For pilgrims, life is reduced to essentials. She or he feels exposed, vulnerable, isolated, and yet at the same time enveloped in a love that is beyond description. And when the pilgrims return home, they are healed, refreshed, and full of life. As pilgrims who walk, we are seeing everything new in Christ. But how do you see without looking? How do we look without understanding? How do we understand without action? Hence the reminder for all of us, look, see, judge, act. A pilgrim looks both within and outside, sees, judges and acts, and as a result, gets transformed. Ignatian year is a pilgrimage for conversion. For Arturo Sosa, our general, reminds us, let us rediscover our roots and thus renew ourselves and our outlook on the world. The daily experience of a new conversion a call to allow the Lord to reveal to us a new enthusiasm, interior and apostolic, a new life, new ways of following Christ. Yes, conversion for each one of us, for our communities, our institutions and our apostolic works. During this year, we will get to know Ignatius better, Jesus deeper and ourselves more intimately. During my first ever visit to Mandriza, I remember rushing to the river Cardonaire where Ignatius had sat down for a little while with his face to the river, which was running deep. And while he was seated there, he received so great an enlightenment that everything seemed new to him. The river was no more deep or charming as of Ignatius' days. But the memory makes a difference for me, even now. My dear brothers and sisters, let's all start or continue our pilgrimages to the depths of ourselves, to the other, especially those who are groaning, to the universe that longs for redemption. Go on a pilgrimage. Jesus is walking beside you. Thank you, Father. During this prayer service, we shall specially remember Father Stan Luth Swami, a human rights activist who gave his life for the rights of the tribals and the poor. Let us spend a moment of silence praying for the repose of his soul.
we shall rise as we join our voices in singing the society's anthem, Mother Dio. Mother Dio, oh company, my heart for thee, my will for thee, may the love and loyalty be true to thee. As that for me, never shall the face it pass us. Not a heart shall turn to thee. The whose hands of heaven bless us. Bless us ever consciously. Father dear, O oh company, my heart for thee. I will for thee, may the love and loyalty be true to thee, as thine for me. In the autobiography of Saint Ignatius, we read that once he was going out of devotion to a church situated a little more than a mile from Manresa. I believe it is called St. Paul's and the road goes by the river. As he went along, occupied with his devotion, he sat down for a little while with his face towards the river which ran down below. While he was seated there, the eyes of his understanding began to be opened. Not that he saw any vision, but he understood and learned many things, both spiritual matters and matters of faith and scholarship. And this was so great an enlightenment that everything seemed new to him. The details that he understood then, though there were many, cannot be stated but only that he experienced a great clarity in his understanding. This was such that in the whole course of his life, after completing 62 years, even if he gathered all the various helps he may have had from God and all the various things he had known, even adding them all together, Ignatius does not think that he had received as much as at that one time. Let us now listen to a reflection by Father John Dardis, who is the General Counselor for Discernment and Apostolic Planning, Roman Curia, who will help us to understand the very words of St. Ignatius, what it would mean for us in today's context, keeping in mind the universal society. I want to talk to you about how to find liberation in your life, how to find true freedom. And I go back to the example of St. Ignatius of Loyola, his huge change in his life came when he was wounded in the Battle of Pamplona. He was fighting uh, in this battle, showed huge courage, was wounded, and had to be brought back to the family castle in Loyola to recover, to recuperate. And there he had nothing to do. He was terribly sick, um, nothing to do. And there were a few books there that he could read. Uh, there was the lives of, of, of Christ and the lives of some saints. At the time, he wasn't really into that so much. There was nothing else to do. And he began to see that well, when he read those books and dreamed of himself in some way in that story, he experienced a lot of deep peace inside himself. Whereas when he dreamed of his former, his for, of continuing his former ways, if you like, it wasn't quite so satisfying. And so he decided, I'm going to go that way where I can find deep peace in my life, deep consolation. And when he got better, he left and walked to Manresa. Um, he still had a very 
I suppose you'd say, immature idea of what following Jesus Christ was like. It was sort of, I want to be like St. Francis, only better. I want to be like St. Dominic, only better. It's kind of like a spiritual competition. But when he got to Manresa, that's when the real, I suppose you'd say the real depth happened. He had a terribly difficult time. He was trying to live this ideal of the Christian life, being like Christ. He had huge scrupulosity, guilt feelings about his past life. Um, he couldn't shake them off. He says he was even suicidal. So really, he got to the depths of himself. And with a lot of effort, a lot of reflection, he began to understand how God was working in him, how God was drawing him to deeper peace, and how the bad spirit, if you like, um, was drawing him away from that peace and making him, making him suicidal, making him desolate, as he'd say. And it was in Manresa that he was able to do a draft, if you like, or draw up uh, or begin to write what's now known as the Spiritual Exercises. And they are, it's a book, um, but really it's not a book to read, it's a book to do, where you can reflect on your life and say, now how's God working in my life? I want to be a good person, I want to be unselfish, I want to reach out to people. How do I do that? It's a great idea but I can't just flatten myself with that ideal. I have to somehow live that ideal for me. I'm, an, I'm a unique individual. You're a unique individual. How do we, how do we live this, these desires inside ourselves so that there's more and more sincerity, authenticity, that they're not just ideologies, but that there's something really coming, coming from the Spirit of God who works deep within us? When I was a young Jesuit, I remember I was um, studying philosophy and I had this very, very ideal notion of the, the ideal Jesuit, the model Jesuit. And I was trying to be that model Jesuit, just as St. Ignatius was trying to be like the other saints, only better. And so gradually I realized I was just getting, I was unhappy. I was getting depressed. I, I wasn't content. And I remember sitting in my room one day um, the provincial had sent me from studying philosophy now to teaching in a school. I remember sitting in my room and saying, I can't go on like this. I have to, have to somehow be me in this vocation or it's not going to work. And that was a huge liberation, a very Ignatian liberation, to begin to say, I can't keep living from a formula. I need to live from the spirit. I need to really realize what the Spirit of God is saying to me as John Dardis in my life for my future as a Jesuit. Being a model Jesuit doesn't work. We're trying to follow Jesus. We're not trying to live up to some idea inside our heads. We're trying to relate to a living person, Jesus Christ. And in your faith, it's the same. Whether you're a lay person or a Jesuit, a woman or a man, we're all trying to follow follow the spirit deep inside ourselves. That's the key thing. So what else can we learn from St. Ignatius? Um, finding real freedom. Finding real freedom. These spiritual exercises that Ignatius wrote, I remember once uh, a friend of mine in, when I lived in Brussels in Belgium said, you know, what are these exercises about? So I gave a long, complicated explanation and I think he got pretty bored. And then he said to me, but surely, John, it's about finding freedom, about liberation. And in just that one word, he, he got it right. It's about finding a real freedom. And that real freedom comes from God, from tuning into God, working in your life, speaking in your heart, calling you to be the real you, the real you. All of us are on this journey, this pilgrimage. We get diverted, we make mistakes. We make idiots of ourselves. We have to pick ourselves up again, dust ourselves off, learn humility. But the key thing is God is there with us all the time. Just as he was there in Manresa with Ignatius, even in the depths of Ignatius's difficulties, 
God reached out to him. God taught him. God taught him the way to the Spirit. And Ignatius handed on those, those uh, rules, those tips, those, those pointers, those um, encouragements uh, to us today. Uh, so you can find you can find real freedom. Um, you can find real freedom freedom through finding a person who can guide you, through your prayer, through companionship, through serving others, and through giving yourself space and time every day just to reflect on your day, reflect on your relationships, give thanks to God, be grateful for yourself. It's the way of Ignatius. He discovered it at Manuisa. You can discover it today also. Let us put forward our prayers and intentions, asking St. Ignatius of Loyola to pray for all of us. Our response will be, St. Ignatius, pray for us. Lord Jesus, the Ignatian year is a time of grace for all of us to renew our life and our commitment to God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and transform us to be the change in this world, a change in understanding the needs of the people, a change in perspective towards the creation. For this we pray, Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Lord Jesus, for last several months, the world is at standstill. Our people have suffered very deeply, lost their near and dear ones. Frustration and depression is the face of humanity today. Help us to accompany each other in solidarity and generate hope even in the hopeless situation. Help us, Lord, to assure our people of the security and peace through togetherness. For this we pray, Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Lord Jesus, in all the calamities and crisis moments, whether natural or man-made, it is the poor who suffer the most. Give us the eyes to see their vulnerability. Give us the heart to feel their pain. Give us the courage to labor with them and uplift them in their struggles for livelihood. For this we pray. Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Lord Jesus, the whole of creation is so beautiful and so holy, but our selfishness have desecrated the sanctity of this creation. We have failed to see the interconnectedness of this creation as the binding force of life on this planet. Lord, help us to realize the many blessings this creation has brought to us. Help us to acknowledge the self-giving of the Mother Earth for our creation, for our sustenance and security. For this we pray. Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Lord Jesus, bless the Mother Earth, bless all the inhabitants of this planet Earth, and bless all the political, religious, social and cultural leaders with wisdom to animate faithfully their responsibility in favor of all the people and the whole of creation, especially the poor, the suffering, the weak and the vulnerable, so that without desecrating the dignity of even the smallest and the weakest creatures of this planet, may we find meaningful coexistence. For this we pray. Saint Ignatius, pray for us. The Superior General of the Society of Jesus, 
Father Arturo Souza will give us the final blessings as we come to the end of this prayer service. Almighty God, we thank you for the deep spiritual experience St. Ignatius had at Manresa, Spain. This experience gave him the grace to find God in everything and everything in God. Like St. Ignatius, each one of us is also invited to deep this communion with God. It is a communion which will show itself not only in what we do, but also in who we are. I ask a special blessing on all who are taking part in this novena. Through the intercession of St. Ignatius, may the graces of this Ignatian year bring renewal and deeper love in each one of us. I ask also for a blessing on the efforts of these young digital Jesuits who organize this novena. May the blessing of a mighty God, who is Father, Son, and Spirit, come down upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Digital Jesuits, along with XIM University and JCSA, take this moment to thank each and every one of you who have been watching this live telecast from all over the world. Our gratitude to all the speakers, to all the translators, the technical and the design teams. This evening wouldn't have been possible without your valuable support and contribution. This is your host, Ria Mary Matthew. May God bless us all.